How about that, Dave Rawlings here? I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about manners of holding the sword, gripping the sword, different permutations of holding the grip. And there are a lot of these in manuals. And to be honest, I think we worry too much when we're looking at this because there's an awful lot of people going, oh no, no, you hold a long sword like this, or no, no, you never hold it like this. Well, to be honest, the grip is to facilitate your use of the sword. You do not get to dictate how your opponent or your partner holds that. There are ways that you can hold it which benefit you, and there are commentaries on this. So there are specific instances where people go, you will hold a sword in a specific manner. Different authors will say, this is how you should hold it. But there's no guarantee from their information that other people were consistently holding it in different manners because individuals are different and they will operate to their own benefit. So when we're looking at this, I want to look at some permutations of grip that I use, some permutations that you see in manuals, um, a few specifics as well. So there's a couple of points where we're told to hold the sword in a particular manner. Now, the reason I quite often come around to this is because I have people quite often contacting me and, for example, in 133 you go, but if you look in the manual, the thumb is always below the cross guard and they're always, people are very, very, they're holding it like this. And yeah, this, this is generally true, but you know, you don't get to say whether your partner does this or not. And if you're worried about this, you're worrying too much. You need to be worrying really about what the rest of this thing's doing. This, again, is a personal issue. If you want to put your thumb here, you put your thumb there. If you leave it open to get cut off, it gets cut off, it's your fault. It probably won't. Don't worry about it too much. Use the grip to facilitate the action that you want to achieve with the sword. Now, the most common permutation of this is if I hold the sword in a hammer grip like so. Now, if I'm here, for example, holding the sword back here, what you'll notice is, as far as I'm concerned, a hammer grip is a very comfortable way of holding this because the heel of the palm here actually supports this in this permutation. However, as I bring the sword forwards, I'm probably gonna find this isn't the best action, and I'm gonna let the sword slip here until it's resting in between the bones of my wrist. So it's basically resting here, underneath the thena eminence here, okay? Rather than the palm heel like so. And this is a simple grip shift. So from here, the hammer grip, forward and here, okay? Now I've always used this in 133, for example. I found it completely natural, and yeah, surely if you look at the manual, you'll see that they're probably doing something more like this. But this doesn't buckle the wrist, I find it comfortable. It's not as illustrated, but it allows me to carry out the techniques as described more easily, so I feel it is an acceptable permutation, okay? So there's two simple grip, grip changes. So we have what I call the channel grip here, which you see very commonly in Spanish schools of swordsmanship and the like here, where it's basically the pommel is passing between the radius and ulna here, and again, resting underneath the thin remnants. And again, the hammer grip. And the hammer grip is good for certain other postures as well. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. It has its uses. From this point, if you look at having a hammer grip like so, one of the simplest things to do is have a shift of the blade profile. So most commonly here, if we've got the edge of the blade towards the second knuckles, is to do something like so, to turn it so that now the flat is there. And you see this quite often in guards like so here. Again, you're using predominantly a hammer grip, but now this allows you to more incorporate things like thwart cuts, this kind of thing, back edge blows. And again, you'll see something similar to this being used in people doing German swordsmanship. You'll see this quite often if you're going through 133. You can do this and do this here, holding normally, but if you put your thumb here, as you do so, this action becomes much more comfortable. So to have a look at another grip, a grip that has an aspect of both the channeled grip, this is something I'm using to describe where the blade is effectively running in the channel between the radius and ulna, and the hammer grip, I'm gonna have a look at something called the Roaring Cut from Maya. This is an interesting permutation in the cut. Now, basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting here, and then as I'm turning the blade, so that as I'm bringing it around my head, I'm able to slash up at the inside of the wrist with this sort of position here. Now, basically what I've done is I've gone from my normal grip however I'm choosing to do that, whether it's like so or whether it's like so, however, okay? And then I'm turning it so that the flat that was on the outside of my arm here is now facing towards me, okay? And this means that as I'm pulling it around here, again, it's able to slash up at the wrist like so, okay? Now this, if you notice, it has aspects of the hammer in that 
it's resting kind of on here, but it's also resting in the channel of my hand. So that really has aspects of both grips in it. So you have a varied position according to my need and my desire to perform a technique. This, by the way, lead cutter came from Matt Easton. Absolutely beautiful, mate. Thank you very, very much. Great way of training Dusak. Very heavy. You really learn to appreciate the full movement of your body rather than just the wrist. Very good buy. Thank you. So if again I go to doing this with the Messer, and again Messer, long sword, it doesn't really make too much difference. We're, it's using it how we want to use it to get its maximum effect. If we want to have a position like this, well, you know, you just take your hand off the back and you do this. It's not complicated, okay? You really, really are using the sword in the manner that you want to use it here. Well, that's very complicated. You take one hand off, you put one hand on. Very easy. A little bit harder to do single-handedly, obviously. Okay? So, these are the simple grips. You change the grip according to what you want to do. Sometimes this will require your thumb to be on the flat. Sometimes it will require you to be in a hammer grip. Sometimes it will be halfway between the two. Sometimes the grip will shift in your hand. And this is very, very common. Okay? You shift it according to need. Now, I'm going to look at some... Grips may seem initially very, very clear. Everybody's got a very clear opinion about how we now do them. And I want to point out to you that this idea is flawed. So in order to continue this on, I wanted to look at rapier grips, side sword grips, this kind of thing. Now, in order to do so, I have a Denali armory sword, but I've taken off all of the couple. This is from his basic. So it looks quite slender and a lot different to how it usually look. Usually has a cup hilt on here. But I've taken it so you can see what I'm doing with the grip. Now, usually you'll see people holding it like so, whether it's in a hammer grip or whether it's in a channeled grip, okay? And both of these things, again, according to the need. Again, there's different ways of doing this here. We can support on by balancing on the thumb and underneath the palm like so, should I wish to hold the sword at this angle. And again, lower, but I'm doing this so you can actually see the grip. Now we have very specific examples of grip. So we have the explanation, for example, in Cavendish here of thumb on the flat, blade like so. Finger over the cross guard, very, very clear, very easy. Tebow, very, very similar. Thumb on the outer edge here, but still on the flat. And then again, running through the channeled grip. Very, very clear, very easy, very simple explanation of what's going on, okay? However, this isn't all of the answers. So one of the most common things, as I say, is when you pick up a cup hilt rapier or any variation of a rapier with lots of um, quillens on it, this kind of thing here, people have a habit of doing this and accepting that this is the way that you grip a rapier, whether it be in a hammer fist or whether it be in a channel grip. You always have your finger here or two fingers or whatever permutation thereof. However, we do have a lot of manuals that show people holding the rapier like so giving the implication that actually this is to stop stuff smashing you on the fingers when you're in this grip. And it doesn't mean that that's the way that all people hold it. Some people may hold it like so. There are illustrations of people doing it. But to assume that this is the one true way of holding a rapier, again, is very, very flawed. So it comes down to choice. You'll see manuals with people holding like so, people holding like so. Which one's right? You choose. This is the big thing. When you hold the sword, unless you are doing something which doesn't allow you to move the sword in the manner that is needed and desired and potentially explained to you by your instructor, you experiment, you find out how best to get the effect from it. Well, if I do this, I'm found that I've got no control. Well, maybe do this, okay? If I do this, I'm finding I'm not able to do some of the freer movements. Maybe do this. I can't impact with the flat. Change your grip. Put in different permutations explore these principles because they are not set in stone. Most of the manuals, unless there's a very specific instruction of exactly where your fingers go, are dealing with the mechanics of sword play. They're not so obsessed about grips. And I do very, very much accept some manuals make a point of saying. Those that say pay specific attention to the grip too. Those that don't say, explore, have fun, see what you can get out of it and get the best you can out of the way you hold the sword. I hope this has been educational. Take care. I'll speak to you soon.